Well, I've been a board member now for six years. I'm a 1980 graduate, and I am with Skidmore Owings and Merrill in San Francisco. So what I'm going to show you is a smattering of work that I've been involved with um, over the last five to six years, some in the U.S., some, in, uh, some over in Asia. So SOM, you know, it's got a long history, 75 years, and, you know, we have a lot of legacy projects. The big thing is we are all about integration and interdisciplinary collaboration. We believe that architecture and engineering are one and the same. So with the new generation and some of the projects I'm going to show you, we carry that ethos of the firm in our current work. And this is where I sort of talk out of both sides of my mouth. We're not your father's SOM, but yet we are your father's SOM. But we're trying to interpret that in ways that are relevant for the high performance buildings that we need today. First building I'm going to show you is Harvard FAS Northwest Labs. It's on the northern side of the campus. It's about 500,000 square feet with four stories above grade and four stories below grade. We have to deal with the traditional uh, Harvard campus in brick, but we're also facing a residential area in a very prominent neighborhood. So the diagram of the building is the lab spaces, which are brick, a connecting spine, and then the open office areas with communal spaces, which allows for inter interaction so these are the interactive two-story spaces that promotes casual collaboration between the researchers and their research assistants. Some of the things that we've done, this is the side facing a residential area, so we've incorporated wood along with glass to have a face that faces towards the residential neighborhood and a face that faces back towards campus. Out to California, job we finished about four years ago, the new Oakland Cathedral over in Oakland, California, international design competition. Uh, which we were fortunate enough to win. The reason we needed a cathedral here in Oakland is this was the old cathedral damaged in the Loma Prieta earthquake. So we had a design competition. This was our competition model, a sense of scale that's about 115 feet, and a freehand you know, design sketch that I did while we were doing the competition. The finalists were ourselves, uh, Santiago Calatrava and Ricardo Legareta. This was our, our organizational diagram, the main chapel here for 1,600 people, mausoleum below. Uh, rectory space, landscaping with Peter Walker, and then the finished imagery of the building. It's basically a, you know, a veil of glass that changes constantly as the light moves around, sunlight moves around, whether sunlight shining in, sunlight shining out. We do about half of our work overseas along with our domestic work. This is a building for the Poly Corporation, 22-story all cable net wall. It's the biggest cable net wall in the world, 90 meters tall, 60 meters wide. And then a smaller 10-story uh, building or 10-story um, glass wall that connects through. The whole thing about this, this company wanted to show an open and you know not a closed environment back towards um, and how it expresses itself out to the public. So the other cool thing about this is they have repatriated our bronze artifacts. So we used this um, basically the lantern piece. It is a museum that is suspended from the main cable. We also use it as the dead weight and the counterweight for the cable net wall. So again, it's architecture and engineering merged together. And then in a nighttime image on the two sides, it's a triangular building, and then the other two sides are a briselet of travertine backlit, so the building is basically a lantern at night inspired by Chinese lanterns. For the same, uh, same company, a little bit further south in China in Guangzhou, it's about a half an hour flight over from Hong Kong. We did two buildings for the Poly Company. Um, these buildings are 36 stories tall. The buildings are only uh, 14 meters wide. Um, so, um, and the purpose of that is it's right next to a convention center. We wanted multiple small office floor plates. The whole diagrid bracing is for wind loading. It also is on the south side, provides solar screening with all of the elevators and stairs pulled out into a core tower. Provides fast and it's fascinating because the elevators are all lit, all glass elevators, so you see it very animated in the evening as well. And then as the building meets meets grade, uh, because Guangzhou is a lot like Miami, it rains like the Dickens there. So in addition to having you know open ground floor spaces, all connected with with covered walkways. Building that we wrapped up um, on August the 8th, 2008, that we did the grand opening at 8.08 a.m. in the morning, because 8 is a very lucky number in China. This is the new U.S. Embassy. It's 500,000 square feet in Beijing on 10 acres. So this is the 10-acre site. Um, this was also a design competition uh, between ourselves and four of the firms we were fortunate enough to secure. 
and we are now beginning actually in addition. Uh, we had to plan it for expansion. The original expansion was supposed to happen in 10 years. We're doing it four years after the building opened, so this is the new building that we've completed uh, construction documents on. It began construction last month. And then this is where the new building's going. Everything about an embassy, it needs to promote. And it's basically our calling card uh, overseas. We're trying to promote openness, and then on the other hand, trying to provide a secure environment. So a lot of these areas that you see in glass are, also, are designed for both ballistic and blast resistance. And then inside, trying to bring natural light in, and with the multiple different department levels who have a tendency to sort of be under themselves, we promoted you know, this atrium through where agencies can interact and through casual interaction in the stairways and through escalators and through the open space, provides a way for them to get to know each other better and not you know, sort of live in their own little cubicles every day. Over in China, I'm wrapping up a 54-story uh, in Nanjing. It's a diagrid exterior brace. We are fortunate enough to be able to carry our work through construction documents and construction administration. This is a, um, a um, performance mock-up that I intended. This is myself and one of my colleagues. And then we get to you know, spend hands-on time. We are very much, in, in addition to the interdisciplinary portion of it, we really believe in the craft of architecture. It's one thing to design it. It's another thing to detail it. But you know, this is me actually showing them how I want the pieces put together, where I want the seals, how I want things to drive through. So it's a wonderful opportunity for collaboration. And these were shots I took when I was over there, probably in August, uh, with the uh, double wall going up, and then some of the different images as the light moves around it. Did another building in Shanghai that I finished up a year and a half ago. This is a um, three and a half million square foot building on five floors. The building is over a half mile long. We sort of joke that you can experience the curvature of the earth as you walk down the spine of the building. Has 6,000 employees. We did all architecture, interior design, structural engineering. Um, it's a double wall where uh, I'll show you some details here in a minute where there's a double wall with louvers that are tied to a solar shade so that, um, so that as the sun moves around we can you know, modulate the light that comes inside. Connecting everything is a central atrium space. Huawei is a computer company and they have a lot of R&D facilities that operate off of both sides of the labs and office spaces. And then uh, building I wrapped up about a year ago in, um, in Tianjin, 78 stories tall. It's an elliptical floor plan that changes on every floor. And so what that does is we're doing it with prefabricated pieces, but each piece of glass is cold bent into place. So you start with a parallelogram shaped piece of glass, the way we detailed it, you basically pull it back into place. Uh, this is where you know 3D modeling and BIM come in very handy because we hand off our model. They go straight into fabrication from that with the geometry. And then some of the views out of this um, on the 67th floor out into uh, Nanjing. We do a lot of lab buildings on campuses. This is a building that finished last year at Rice University. The Texas Medical Center is here. Rice is here. Did a 12-story lab building and then a two-story research facility adjacent to it. Back in San Francisco, things are a lot better now. A lot of things are hopping. We're doing a lot of renovation work. This is a 1960s John Carl Warnicke building that was originally done for AT&T. We have repurposed it for a developer. Um, we're basically putting on new curtain wall. The curtain wall is up to here. We added two floors, changed the floor plate, added to the floor plate to make it more marketable for offices. This is a 3D model that we built of San Francisco where we can, we can understand topography, winds, and we're doing, uh, at 8 Washington, it's a um, 140 uh, condominiums right along the Embarcadero, 10-story tower, 8-story tower. This is in design development. Now, the big lesson here is it's one thing to do architecture, collaborate with an owner, collaborate with, um, with your other disciplines. But there is so much you know, of this in a very wealthy area. There's a lot of NIMBYs, you know, not in my backyard. So it has been a wonderful exercise in the political system in San Francisco. So you can see we're right here along the Embarcadero, the different piers. So here's our, here's our project. We have a health club and then a, and a little pocket park. Also in San Francisco, uh, commercial work is coming back. We just um, demolished a building here. This is a 23-story uh, uh, tower. We started out as a pure spec building, which we thought the developer was a little out of his gourd. You know, wanted to do a spec building when we started two years ago. It's now fully leased uh, to Salesforce. Uh, the building is under construction. This is the financial district, so we're right here. And then the big thing here is to provide an urban space. San Francisco has a fantastic climate, so we have it where at the 
On nice days, we can completely open up the ground floor, 50 foot tall um, lobby space, and basically it provides a, you know, an opportunity for basically an urban room in a deep urban environment with a, a media wall that's back on the back side that's constantly changing. It's being uh, developed with a local artist. Right across the street, we're repurposing a building that SWIM did in, the, in 1980. This is what the building looks like. It's also, uh, it's 52 stories, fully leased, but it needed a, basically a facelift, so we're completely renovating uh, all the ground floor, taking a lot of the um, sort of the bulkiness of the stone out, new entrances, and, um, and brand new lobby space. And then going now back overseas, I leave from here tomorrow to go over to Beijing. We're doing three towers. This is again for the Poly Corporation, double skin diagrid, and then two uh, spec towers. The double skin uh, basically follows each one of these as a two-story triangle. Um, and then landscape, I think you know some of the others have mentioned it. We work a lot with some fantastic landscape architects. I know you guys have Peter Walker coming over here soon. Was it like two or three weeks? The next fall. Oh, next fall. Okay, fantastic collaborator. This is our diagram of the building. Basically, it's you know lease space around the core with the double skin diagrid, and then a lot of atrium spaces connecting this. This is also for the for the Poly Corporation. They're going to move their headquarters into the top floor. They've now pre-leased about half of the building. We take a lot of looks during design at not only you know sort of the integration of of form and materials, but also in a very systematized way. We've done full construction documents on this. I'm actually going over there for the performance test, showing what it looks like being able to pull it apart. Because when you're when you're talking to any client, or especially when you're dealing with multiple languages, the more that you can show graphics, design ideas, how things come together, where once you know we, we sort of kid once they get the fever, the job becomes a whole lot easier. And then I was there just before Christmas, so this is the status of construction the two weeks before Christmas. They're now up um, four more tiers of the diagrid. At University of California, San Francisco, a uh, neurosciences lab that we just finished uh, four months ago. Uh, really big on, on interactive, casual interaction spaces. So these are, um, these are based on meeting rooms uh, where, the, um, where the researchers can get together. And then uh, we developed all, all the lab benches all the way down to the finite nitty-gritty work. Uh, this was done. It was our first P3, public-private partnership, where, they, where we basically worked for the developer and the builder as part of the project. Uh, that led to a commission. Um, again, we were down here at 8 Washington. We're out here now in Presidio for the VA. We're doing a new 100,000-square-foot lab building which the new building is here, and then we're renovating uh, these buildings, bringing them up to current seismic codes, doing a complete remodel on the exterior. We've done a lot of work on courthouses. This is in San Bernardino, California, which is about 60 miles east of Los Angeles, 12-story courthouse, 36 courtrooms, um, all tuned to the sun, the south elevation, deep recesses, the north elevation, all curtain wall with a view out to the San Gabriel Mountains. This was from a curtain wall mock-up that we finished two weeks ago. Um, where on the northern side, floor-to-ceiling glass, um, you know, fritted glass to try to capture light and bounce light back inside at the circulation court as you headed into the courtrooms. And then the imagery at night, you know, we're basically, you know, we are the biggest building in, in downtown San Bernardino. So we're trying to also to promote a friendly and public face uh, for the administrative offices of the court. Also in L.A., we just uh, completed design development today. This is a new 100,000-square-foot building at UCLA for a medical education center. Uh, cutaway section where we have the auditorium, and each one of these are the PBL and research labs. This is for the School of Medicine right adjacent to a uh, large hospital on the UCLA campus. Some other work we're doing with the U.S. government, this U.S. consulate in Guangzhou. It's a little bit smaller. It's only about 350,000 square feet, Joel Shapiro sculpture. So this is one of our renderings from two years ago. Uh, one of my team members just got back. The building opens in May. Um, one of the things that you do when you deal with a high security facility is how to make it as open as it can be, still providing you know, blast and ballistic resistance because each one of these windows you know, is about $150,000 for each window. So you have to use that stuff judiciously. And then in, then in how you craft that, and again, all in about you know, materials and how you can craft things to the point where it can get built with the level of craft and precision you know, that we would all want to have. One of the things that I'm really excited about this, um, the main building, which is where a lot of the U.S. workers are, I've been obsessed with how to get you know, a razor-sharp glass corner. So we basically have a building in a building, 
uh, finally found a way of getting fused glass corners, which we now have implemented. So each one of these is independently pinned off about 10 inches away from a core 10 inner wall. The inner wall provides the blast resistance. The outside provides other performance requirements that I really can't get into. Um, some work down in San Diego. Rick, I don't know if you had a chance to see this. We're down here. This is uh, the School of Medicine uh, right at UCSD. This is where you know, my daughter got on to me because her, she just graduated pre-med two years ago from UCSD just as we finished this building up. Um, so it's a four-story building wrapped around a courtyard. The wonderful thing about San Diego is fantastic indoor-outdoor environments. We tried to capitalize on that. And then also down in San Diego, we just wrapped up construction documents for a 26-story, 72-court room um, building in downtown San Diego. Out in West Hollywood, we're doing um, uh, Sunset Millennium, which is residential and hotel right in West Hollywood. And then the job I'm really jazzed about, we just won a uh, national design competition for the new LA Federal Courthouse. Um, it, it is a design build opportunity. We're working along with Clark Construction. So a lot of people will recognize, you know, LA, um, LA Center, which I always refer to as the Dragnet Building. So we're right here along First Street. Um, 24 courtrooms, federal courtrooms, each organized around an atrium. Uh, we do also do internships. We had a lot of discussion this morning. Uh, our intern, I don't know, did, did this poster ever get, I sent it up here, I don't know if it ever got posted here. For those who are interested in internships, our cutoff time is in three weeks, so forward your resumes on out. And then the last thing I'd like to close with, and this is a really awful image that I just pulled off the web today. I've just completed a book that's going to be published uh, at the AIA convention all about design process of exterior enclosures. It talks about the physics, the design process, the participants, uh, the, the design process as we go through from schematics to construction documents, the construction process, and then six chapters of case studies using some work that I've done. A couple of Vignoli projects are in here and about six Paycob Freed works to support you know, how those projects went from start to finish, and it's all focused on design process when done in an orderly way where everyone is a participant and a collaborator can yield two fantastic results. So with that,